tweeted something that really stood out. You said the threat to American democracy increased exponentially over the past five years or so when mediocre people of meager talents realized they would never have to work a straight job again as long as they could terrify a nation of right wing nitwits about the end of real America. I don't like where this is going. I think the entire Fox primetime lineup is basically organized around um, keeping people terrified and keeping themselves on television from Tucker Carlson to Laura Ingraham in the evening. There doesn't seem to be a consequence for that, though. Do you think? They're, they are selling something that the market wants to buy, um, but much like a, a drug, um, when you start people on fear uh, as a way to hook them into watching television, you have to keep delivering bigger and bigger hits. The more CNN constantly like Russia this, Russia that. Because it's ratings. Because it's ratings? Our ratings are incredible right now. Hey everyone, welcome back. If you saw my video from yesterday, it was another great example of CNN defending themselves from the charge of being political propagandists who are damaging the country by accusing their opponents and critics of doing that very thing. Brian Stelter accused right-leaning media of being something he called repeaters and not reporters. Whenever anyone asks me about trust in media, I try to ask, what do they mean by media? Because everyone is a member of the media now. The media includes the New York Times and also a no-name blogger. What's the nutritional value of the content? Is it produced by reporters or by repeaters? So at the risk of repeating myself a little bit, okay? Repeaters are the talk radio shouters who tell listeners to hate the other side. They're on TV and radio telling the same story every day. Besides the glaring irony of the fact that Stelter was engaged in doing that very thing at that very moment, it's also pretty obvious that CNN is in the business of doing that. I may be a mediocre person of meager talents in the words of CNN, but you'll want to see where I'm going with this. But first, take just 30 seconds to check out this special offer for my viewers. These days, the future is still more uncertain than ever. That's why people who know what's coming are using today to prepare. You can't wait until the last moment. By then, it's too late. The most important thing you need is long-term storage emergency food. And saving $50 is impossible to pass up, but supplies are limited. So go to www.preparewithdronetech.com right now and stock up. That's preparewithdronetech.com. There's no time to lose, do it now. That brings us to another CNN ghoul, Brianna Keeler, who today put on a very similar theatrical performance to what we saw from Tater yesterday, whose segment accused Fox News, conservatives, and people like me of selling fear so that we never have to work again. No, no, we don't have convictions or do what we do out of love for our country. Pfft, no way. It's actually the third law of the Democrat State Ministry of Information. The only legitimate protest is one that advances the Democrat Party's agenda. And again, there's exactly zero reflection or awareness that they're actively engaged in doing exactly what they're accusing Fox News of. You tweeted something that really stood out. You said the threat to American democracy increased exponentially over the past five years or so when mediocre people of meager talents realized they would never have to work a straight job again as long as they could terrify a nation of right-wing nitwits about the end of real America. I think the entire Fox primetime lineup is basically organized around um, keeping people terrified and keeping themselves on television from Tucker Carlson to Laura Ingraham in the evening. There doesn't seem to be a consequence for that, though. Do you think? They're, they are selling something that the market wants to buy. Um, but much like a, a drug, um, when you start people on fear uh, as a way to hook them into watching television, you have to keep delivering bigger and bigger hits. Weird, there's a lot of fear mongering and myth making going on right now. The very thing that they accuse Fox News and the right of. First, they constantly repeat this big lie that questioning the 2020 election results is somehow an attack on democracy or constitutional law. It's so strange that these people are saying this now after four years of the very same people not accepting election results. They began calling for Trump's impeachment before he even took office. The Steele dossier, 
dossier, which we now know was just Russian disinformation, was injected into the media, and then they spread it around as a means of undoing the election results. They were doing exactly what they now claim is an attack on democracy and the Constitution. They were undermining faith in our elections by claiming that Russia somehow hacked in and stole it. Hillary Clinton herself said on many occasions that Donald Trump was illegitimate, again, heavily implying that the election was stolen. Can you give a direct answer? You will accept the election? I have to see. Look, you, I have to see. Another alarming obliteration of presidential and democratic norms. Trump knows he's an illegitimate president who got illegitimate foreign help. He knows he's an illegitimate president. He knows that there were a bunch of different reasons why the election turned out the way it did. You can run the best campaign, you can even become the nominee, and you can have the election stolen from you. I know that he knows that this wasn't on the level. Why do you think the president is going to such great lengths to essentially prove that he beat you? Because he knows he didn't. He knows he's an illegitimate president. I do think that he knows uh, that uh, he's an illegitimate president. Is that what you think, that this came down just to sort of craven self-interest on the part of a mediocre cadre of political operatives and, and bloviators? It's very serious. It's ongoing. Uh, it began last year when the, the uh, loser of the election, Donald Trump, uh, for the first time in American history, refused to commit to a peaceful transfer of power and still refuses to commit to it. We are in a constitutional crisis. It's not looming. It's not ahead of us. Um, we're smack in the middle of it with an entire political party, an entire political movement that rejects the basic constitutional norms and, and uh, laws that govern our elections. This, this is really serious. And there are cable networks. Um, not the one we're on, but there are cable networks whose uh, hosts spend the entire evening um, scaring people half to death. Oh, right, right. It's those dastardly right-wing conservatives who are doing that, not us. And you'll know if it's a puff piece if it doesn't mention that in a quarter century on the air, Fox has devolved from a network that once actually kind of covered the news with a little conservative flair to a well-documented, hostile workplace that is a mouthpiece of the extreme, peddling racism and white supremacy and deadly misinformation, some of which, if you actually follow it, can kill you. Week from hell on Capitol Hill. Congress has less than two days to head off a partial government shutdown. And after that, the potential collapse of the U.S. economy as Republicans have voted against paying U.S. debts. So the week from hell could turn into the economic calamity from hell if the U.S. defaults on its debts, which Republicans for now have voted to let happen. This is what we're seeing when the, when the value system, society's larger value system of white women being valued heavily and women of color not being valued as much comes through the media because a lot of the decisions about what's being covered is made largely by newsrooms led by white men. And that's the core of the problem here. I could have told you that this Gabby Petito story was going to blow up because we all know who gets attention. We all know who gets coverage. If President Trump is reelected, is the threat of domestic terrorism greater COVID concerns in school districts across the country are now leading to dangerous situations for school board members. They're worried for their own safety after an increasing number of threats. Well, Viola, look, those videos that we see are incredibly scary. So we know that this is increasing and we'll keep an eye on it. Tense hurricanes, record wildfires, and of course, more frequent drought, heat waves and floods. As the climate change worsens, uh, these events are becoming more and more severe and they continue to have a devastating impact in our communities. President-elect Joe Biden has vowed to take bold action to fight this global crisis. It's the existential crisis for, for our civilizations in this century, the way that fascism in Europe was a century ago. Party of no, trying to distract and dis deflect with some really shameful statements about race, like this disgusting claim that Black Lives Matter doesn't like families. That is not even coded racism. That's right out, saying it right out loud. Saying it right out loud. And there's something happening now that is not normal, that is a threat. It's not a normal political negotiation. It's not the kind of disagreement we might have over immigration policy or dealing with China or anything like that. It's an outright threat to the welfare of the country. 
An extreme example would some, be some group saying, we're going to dump anthrax in the water supply unless you do X, Y, or Z. You know, that is a threat. This is not a public health threat, but it's a threat that can have uh, real economic implications. The danger is this move towards autocracy and the way the Republican Party has bought into it and the way they are shutting down Congress and doing all of these things to bring Trump back in 2024 and to get the midterms in 2022. And we are at this dangerous point. And the, the crisis is how do we communicate this to the American people? Mm. Part of the community. You're part of this country. You're part of the global community. And you're contributing to killing people. That's, that's unconscionable. There is no forgiveness. There is no forgiveness for these people. Okay, let's see about that. CNN's job appears to be keeping people in constant fear of white people, conservatives, Republicans, climate change, coronavirus, protesting parents, free speech, police officers, the second amendment. I mean, I'm sure I'm missing something here. Let me know in the comments section. All right, folks, that's all I have for this one. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button and share. If you enjoyed this channel, I encourage you to subscribe and hit that bell icon. If you have some extra time, let me know what you think in the comments section.